Mark, and uh, yeah, we've been on it for a lot of months, so I just gave up a bit of a shout on Facebook. And then uh, I was just working a bit, he just got a, a Wyndham type antenna, I think. Here you go, Charlie again. Uh, just spent today having a bit of a play around with some um, diode mixing. Um, I originally was going to use a circuit like this where the diode switching was going to switch <clears throat> between the 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, IF amps sharing the one crystal filter. Um, but I elected not to go with that one. I had a bit of a chat with uh, Pete Giuliano N6QW and uh, um, he suggested or he was um, said that he was looking at having one common IEF block here so you've got your crystal filter two IEF amps and then have that shared uh, between the uh, the transmit and receive directions so I had another potter around and uh, did some more noodling with the uh, the circuit and uh, this is what I've effectively uh, wired up over here um, so effectively Depends uh, if it's on transmit or receive, but there's um, four sort of steering diodes here um, that I scavenged out of an old uh, FT301. And uh, if I just pick on this one here, for example, on transmit, 12 volts goes through a 3.3k ohm resistor just to uh, limit the current through the diode. Um, radio frequency choke, uh, that biases the diode on. Uh, another radio frequency choke to earth. So the two RFCs are basically just making sure that any of the RF that's desired to go through the system here is not being shunted either up to 12 volts or down to down to earth. So depending if it's on transmit, then these two are turned on, and then on receive it's the other way around. Uh, and for all intents and purposes, uh, it's acting as a uh, a double pole, um, double throw relay, effectively. So if you do look closely over here, you can see that coming into play. So we have here the two, I'm going to zoom out a tad, uh, you've got that, the crystal filter, the two uh, uh, amplifiers based around uh, Cascoder J310s, and then we've got the um, those four diodes there, one, two, three, four. Um, the inputs come in, so this would be the common, so if we, if we think of this as a, a, a double pole, double throw relay, here goes your two poles. Um, so it comes in and effectively gets split up by the two uh, 10 nanofarad capacitors and then they can get run down either one of two lanes or one of, uh, sorry, four lanes but in either direction. And then the uh, the voltage here from these switching um, 2N 222 uh, transistors supply the 12 volts to uh, to turn on um, depending on which side it is. So for transmit it's the two outer sides and on receive it's the two inner sides and that basically just allows the, the RF to be steered through um, that particular crystal filter. The, uh, I've modified the code so on transmit um, there's a zero applied or zero volts applied to one line and five volts to the other and then vice versa um, on receive it toggles the way around and that basically just steers uh, which one of these gets zero volts and which gets 12 volts to bias those, those um, those diodes on. So yeah, interesting. Um, you know, I, I can't help wondering, well, you know, this is a, yes it is solid state. Um, one could argue that a simple relay would have been just as effective, but um, you know, the whole idea was to have a bit of a tinker around with this and have a bit of a play. Um, tomorrow I'm going to go and do some more, um, go get some more strip board and we'll look to wire up <coughs> A lot to wire this up tomorrow, so this will be effectively switching the four, um, the four bandpass, or say again, three bandpass filters. So it'll be along effectively the same same approach, uh, just basically switching these these bandpass filters. So we've got uh, three of those, one for each band, and it'll be the same sort of process. So. The, uh, the teensy we're putting out, um, zero volts, which will go through a simple um, transistor switch here um, to basically, uh, if one's earthed out, then the other two will have um, high volts, high voltage of 12 volts to, to keep them reverse biased. Um, 
RF will be coming in, so it's paralleled up, and then depending on which combination of uh, diodes are turned on will depend on which path the RF takes. Um, so that'll be the process. Um, these are 150 microhenry uh, RF chokes, um, and I've run out of uh, scavenged diodes, so I'll be using um, four 001s. I'll try those there and see how, the, see how I can get on with those. So that's tomorrow's play. But um, all in all, that uh, was quite effective. Um, from what I can gather, there seems to be no major uh, um, attenuation of the RF going through. It seems to be just as effective as it was when it was uh, wired up directly. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, that seems to be working quite well. Interesting too, this is coming through now, Ryan, as you can see down here, 7.133 megs. Um, this antenna is cut for 3.5 so um, that seems to be coming through quite well there. The old RF antenna over here. So we get to... So uh, yeah, that's good. So anyway, that's, um, like I say, that seems to be uh, an interesting way of, of switching the RF. Um, I won't bother going through um, the code because it's literally just um, doing a digital write. Um, like I say, digital write high for one, low on the other, and vice versa, depending on transmit and receive. Um, and as you can see here, 12 volts coming in, and that's just being steered by um, these two transistors to, to switch on and off the, uh, and off the, uh, the diodes. But um, yeah, quite effective. And like I say, tomorrow uh, we'll get some more components, and uh, we'll look to wire up something similar for those bandpass filters. But I'll uh, keep you posted. Uh, any questions, sing out. Um, I'm hopefully trying to pass on whatever information I'm sort of learning here. Uh, it's all about collectively learning. Anyway, thanks for that. Cheers, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.